Now then, uh, the rise of UKIP has been a talking point for journalists and a thorn in the side for the main political parties for most of this parliament, really. But if Nigel Farage doesn't become an MP next week, he will stand down as leader and the party will have lost its only star. So could we about to see the UKIP story come to an end? Well, the UKIP leader, Nigel Farage, joins me now and he's <laughs> chuckling. But it is a serious point, isn't it, Mr Farage? I mean, this time... Next week, it could all be over for Nigel Farage if you don't win that seat you're after. You said you'll stand down in well, it ten, could be all over. ten minutes. It, yeah, it's about ten minutes, is about right. Um, it could be over for Mr Clegg. Uh, Cameron may, long, may, may longer be leader of the Tory party. Miliband may be gone. Natalie Bennett may be gone. We all may be gone. All I was doing in saying that was really just stating the obvious. Mm. You know, but, I need to win that seat. It's as simple as that. Yeah, but, I mean, just, just, just to push that, I mean, would it be... A tactic? Would you stand again? You'd you'd stand down because you thought I haven't won the seat, or is it is it on the personal side of things? It's all over. I've given my all. Now I want to get back. And you've been talking about the toll the campaign's taken on your family and other things. Do you know? The one thing, if I say I'm going to do something, I do it. So, uh, but so I've said to you that if I lose, I'll go, and I'll now say to you, I will still be here next week. Okay, you'll say that, but right. people, people will. Well, I won't just say it; I'll believe it. All right. Well, of course. I mean, and, and and as the old saying goes, only the final poll will will tell us that. But a lot of talk about, as you say there, about leadership in so many, all of the parties. Yes. Yeah. You know, is UKIP a one-man band? You know, would it suffer without Nigel Farage as its leader? Look, you know, you've seen over the course of the last few months the Carswells, the Recklesses, the Suzanne Evans, the Stephen Wolfs, the Paul Nuttles, all doing more and more of the mainstream media, coming on your show as well. Uh, we've seen probably the best manifesto that any party's ever produced, in the sense that it was independently verified and audited, um, and, and we've become a much more professional party. I mean, there are 5,000 people standing for UKIP at those elections next Thursday, uh, and, and we've suffered fewer embarrassments with our candidates than the other parties have in this election. So UKIP has moved on a long, All right. long way. I, I mean, you know, I was going to raise that a bit later, but, you know, while we're on the embarrassments, no, do, let's please. get this out of the way. And as you point out, exactly as you said yeah. there, other parties, many more embarrassments. But mm. you all seem to be concentrated in the rather damaging area for UKIP of ethnicity, of race, of, of, of people saying offensive things well, about that. OK, OK, all right, so fine. So we've had, out of 5,000, fewer than a handful have caused us a problem. Can I tell you that since January the 1st, there have been 300 councillors for the Liberal Democrat, Labour and Conservative parties who have been arrested, mm. imprisoned or sacked for crimes far worse than saying something nasty on Facebook late at night. And what I've said about this for years is if we've got our bad guys, I'm the leader, I have to say, you know, I'm responsible for it. Mm. But actually, a blind eye is turned to... But it wasn't, it wasn't I, the numbers I'm I was talking, talking about, Mr Farage. It was, it was the issues and the... You know what people well, well, say. I'm you know what about, your critics say I'm about talking you, about particularly racial on the assault. left. People say, people say about you, Kip, you know, that underlying it all, it's, it's got a racist tinge to it. And, well, it doesn't. And a lot, well, of course you deny that. But, uh, you know, a lot of your candidates and former candidates, the people that you have disciplined, have been saying things which are pretty awful, yes. as I say, about ethnicity and race. Some of our people have said awful things and some of the other parties have had people actually convicted in court of racial assault so I'm happy to answer this but please when you interview the other leaders ask them the same mm. question and can I just say to you that at this general election what we're seeing in UKIP is a big rise of black and ethnic minority candidates for UKIP and voters for how many UKIP. have you got well we've got over 60 black and ethnic minorities standing for us in the general election and across the other uh, thousands of council seats I don't know but a lot mm. You know, a lot. And, and the whole thing has changed, and, and we're getting a lot, you know, of good votes amongst those communities too. OK, well, uh, let's look. At least you're not going to sit here and tell me you're going to form, uh, or maybe you are uh, going to form uh, uh, an outright majority form <laughs> the government after the next general election. I mean, that, that would be way beyond your capabilities and, I suppose, your ambitions. What are your ambitions in terms of influencing things? It's all down the Conservative side, isn't it? And you've already got that well, pledge for a referendum. I mean, the one thing that I got wrong in this election campaign, completely wrong, was I thought Miliband would promise an EU referendum. I thought he'd do it with about the same degree of sincerity that Mr Cameron did it, but I thought he'd do it. Uh, he hasn't done it. And that would give you both options. Uh, and, and that would have given us an option. I mean, you know, you know, we want our primary goal for that brilliant UKIP manifesto to be put in place. The precondition is we have to get back control of our country, we have to get back control of our borders, and that means getting a full free and fair referendum. So Miliband, much to my surprise, has completely turned his back on the idea of giving people a say. Mr Cameron has made a referendum promise, albeit he broke one before, he vacillated. I mean, he's been all over the show on this. 
If that referendum is going to happen, and if it's going to be a full, free and fair referendum, it will need UKIP there to hold his feet to the fire to make sure... And that you would make him... You, you, I mean, your ambition would be to make him have that referendum this year. But he says, you know, p part of the referendum has to be after a renegotiation. He could hardly get that together and achieve what he would want to achieve there in is, just a few months. There is no renegotiation. You know, I was with, I was, I was, I was with Jean-Claude Juncker three days ago, and, and there are two things that the British people would want renegotiated. One is the supremacy of law, and they're not going to concede that. You know, our Supreme Court will not be, you know, will still be beholden uh, to two other courts, one in uh, Luxembourg and one in Strasbourg. But secondly, and perhaps crucially, is this issue of the free movement of people. And what Juncker has said, and what Mr Tusk, who runs the council, has said, and what the real boss, Mrs Merkel, has said is there is no negotiation on this. So why waste a couple of years when those things are already off okay. the agenda? So is this a red line? Lots of talk about red lines, of course, but if you yeah. are talking well, to Conservative representatives, you say you hold that referendum in 2015. Yeah, there's no reason why we can't do that. But is that a red line? Absolutely. We need to have that referendum and we need to have it now. If, if not, we will vote against you in a Queen's speech. If you don't, offer to hold it that's, now. Yes, that's how I feel about it. But, but, but can I please just say this to you, that, that here we are, four days to go before a general election. I'm not blaming you, but the whole debate today that is going on through the newspapers and through all the multi-channel discussions is about who is going to get into bed with who next Friday morning. What we are not... Well, that's the best you can achieve, but, isn't it, from well, UKIP's point but, of view? But what we're not doing is we're not discussing policy. I mean, we really do, in these last four days, need to get real and talk about the policy choices that are offered by the different parties. And that, to me, is the great frustration of this campaign. I mean, look, our national debt has doubled in the last five years. This isn't being talked about. 624,000 people came as migrants to Britain last year. That isn't being talked mm, about. Quite a lot of people we, left, though, you as know, well. We have, well, look at it either way, it's still a massive, massive net, uh, and massive net figure. Uh, we're not really talking about the housing crisis uh, that is confronting young people in this country today. And, and I just think we need, in the last four days, to start talking a bit more about policy. Mm, and it's how much of that policy that you could insert through the influence that UKIP holds on a bigger party. How many seats? Well, you know, what's your, your working, your back of the envelope calculation? Obviously, you think you're going to get in, uh, Mr. Reckless, Mr. Yeah. Carswell. How many seats are you, you basing your assumptions on? I don't know. Well, I, I don't know. But what I do know is this that there's been a really big attempt over the last month to talk down UKIP's prospects. Every day, uh, you know, editorials are, well, UKIP's on the slip, and actually UKIP's on the rise. Our poll figures are steadying. Uh, there is also some quite considerable evidence now of what's called the shy kipper, people who will vote UKIP but won't tell pollsters they're going to do so. Uh, and I, I've got a feeling that next Friday morning, some of the Liberal metropolitan elite may wake up but, with, a bit of, with a bit of a hangover. But don't you think that, that appeal from the Conservatives you know, is getting through, particularly about the issue of a referendum? There you are. It's only the Conservatives who say they will deliver that. And if a UKIP voter, loyal UKIP voter, is in danger of depriving a Conservative, particularly a, a Conservative uh, member of Parliament or ex-member of Parliament who, you know, has been very close to UKIP and is pretty Eurosceptic, if they're in danger of depriving them of a seat, aren't they, in the end, well, going to vote for the Conservative I think candidate? that's wrong for two reasons. Firstly, of course, uh, there is this misconception uh, that, that, that still goes on that UKIP voters are former Tories, and increasingly uh, the, the Tory percentage of the UKIP vote gets smaller and smaller as we pick up more Labour people and as we pick up people who did not vote in 2010, which is now a very significant chunk of the UKIP vote. So, you know, in Rochester, only a third of the reckless vote, which won in the by-election, had come from the Conservatives in 2010. So that argument, arithmetically, is irrelevant. But here's the political point. People that have left David Cameron since 2010 have left him because he's covered the country in wind turbines, he's slashed our defences, he's overseen, you know, massive rises Boarding in immigration. Is that an issue? Uh, for some people out there it is, yes. Uh, and he's also spent the first half of the Parliament saying it wouldn't be in the national interest to have a referendum on EU membership. Okay, I mean, we've heard and they know, you, Mr. Farage. And you know, they you're, know, you're, they you're, know, but hang on, those yeah. voters know that the only reason he's even talking about a referendum is because of what UKIP did, uh, you know, growing through the, through the sort of 2012 and 2013 period, and that actually, if they really want a referendum, because this man has broken his word before, if they really want a referendum, they need UKIP MPs. Would you prefer a different leader to the Conservative Party if they, you know, I mean, a lot of, there's a lot of ifs here, but, um, you know, mm. with, 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 say, a Boris Johnson, would you find someone like him easier to deal well, with? I mean, I I'm not a Conservative, but if I was a Conservative, I would like to have a leader who was actually a Conservative, and that's perhaps been part of their problem.
Nigel Farage, thank you very much indeed, the leader of UKIP there.